the next part I'm going to talk about just about no assholes and what it means, what it means to loop and where it came from. We started to notice some issues with no assholes. First, like let's get to the history. We did our core values exercise for the second or third time, like we were always refining it. I've, to I've talked about this before, but we did a really important workshop with a company called Conveyor, uh, Isaac and his team who we have, we owe a lot to. This is even before Kinesis. And we got together and luckily we had been a company for 10 years already. So we really knew, not 10, eight, whatever, um, enough years. And we knew really what we were about from being it. We were already it. Uh, we could do it intuitively, but it wasn't possible to describe it in words that clearly you would have to like work with us for a year or talk to t for us for two hours and still it'd be confusing like what we were about. So we hadn't really like put our finger on like what are the words. And so we started to work with professional communicators to help us do that. And like any good designers, there were lots of sticky notes and we're like doing all this discovery. And this was by the end of it, we're grouping into different ones and you can already see some of them develop. like collaboration, trust, okay to challenge ideas, best idea, machine, you know, like you can see, these are all things that we were just throwing on the, throwing on the board and they got clustered together. This one just says no assholes. It says people over business here. And basically what we were saying and what we were representing at the time was, um, it's more important for us to maintain our relationships and protect our people than it is to maintain a client relationship. Like we'll fire clients, like we'll fire clients because they're abusive and we needed to do that because uh, in our industry, clients can sometimes be abusive, uh, especially to controls engineers. And so I never felt that that was fair or appropriate. And I'm a bit of a smart ass and, you know, anti-authoritarian in that way. I'm like, no, not gonna, not gonna put up with that bullshit. It was cool and important and real that we would represent no assholes primarily as like an anti-bullying policy because when the electrical team, does their design and the mechanical team is late and then they're all late putting it together and they hand it to the controls engineers with one week after they were supposed to be running and they're like, start working. Like that's the lot, that's, we've all, you know, many of us, any of us who worked in controls engineering have been in that seat. There's kind of like a intensity to it. It's kind of like those who survive that process, like are proud of that ability to do that and work under that degree of pressure. And like, it also hones your skill set. Like there, that's, the, that's the culture. Like we all know that, I'm just saying that out loud. We also felt like that wasn't necessary. It wasn't fair. Uh, there were things about it where people are just like, why isn't it running? You know, it's always a software problem too. Um, and so that's what No Assholes was about, was about like, we're not going to tolerate abusive behavior from clients. It was like, yeah, really about anti-bullying and um, it was real. And when we'd have flare ups or whatever, we would never let it go. We would always at least talk about it, check in about it. Um, we didn't always fire clients, but sometimes we would have hard conversations that other companies might not have had because we represented this and this was real to us. But, we did work through a lot of client relationships that had that characteristic to them. And we dealt with a lot of the assholes, <laughs> I guess. Um, and we would see them coming from further away. We would recognize it earlier in the process. We would make decisions that would like navigate us away from those situations. Sometimes at the cost of like billings or whatever, like, but it didn't matter. It was more important, but, but really it's too low of a bar. Uh, it's not enough to not be an asshole. It's, and that's something that's really important to say. Like that's the, it's sort of implicit is like, that's the behavior we're expecting from people. And we're not gonna expect that from people. Like our expectations are way, are way higher than that. Actually need to be wonderful. It's, that's, that's really what's important. So to say no assholes, yes, no assholes, but, but also to hold it up as like a core principle of the company it started to feel like that doesn't feel like as important as the other things that we're about, right? It's not enough. In fact, it's kind of watering down the most important values expression of the company by being like, oh, by the way, don't be an asshole. It's like, it's weak. And like I mentioned, we've only really applied it externally and as a way of protecting each other, it's, it was valuable. And we will continue to do that. Uh, we will never stop doing that. Um, but it wasn't useful in day-to-day -day life. Like, well, there are relationships. Like I can call Dan an asshole if he's, if I feel like that's appropriate, but like, that's, that's a special connection. You know, like we can't have, most of you would not be comfortable or it wouldn't be appropriate to call each other an asshole to solve a problem in a conflict that you're in. 
it's a label, it's negative, it's, it's not useful, right? We can't say like we're making this decision because no assholes, because everybody has their reasons. There might be behaviors that need to be addressed, but it's not practical. I could probably count on my hands the number of times like I've called upon this as a value to inform a decision that was difficult or to address or solve a conflict among our team, either between me or between other people. So it doesn't work. It's not useful. And I will just say, so are we allowing assholes now? Go ahead and try. <laughs> See what happens. Do you know what will happen? Uh, you will get dealt with. Anybody will get dealt with who behaves in that way. Uh, that's a lifetime commitment. So we are going to retire it. We're just going to retire it. And we will now have six. I kind of touched on it briefly. It's like, well, what about all the important things about no assholes? And uh, as I was thinking about this, many of the things that we would count on in no assholes are already in the other six. Like in particular, trust and collaboration, which is like asshole behavior will not allow for collaborative collaboration or trust to exist like and so often as i thought through cases like that it would have been enough to say like we aren't achieving that we're not living up to that standard um, in fact we don't need to call anybody an asshole to do that we might need to talk to them about hey when this when you show up in this way like this is how it's impacting other people that's a much more productive conversation from a trust and collaboration point of view than it would be from a stop being an asshole point of view right that's immediate defensiveness Revolutionary improvement, think critically, like those are all areas where we can, I guess, focus and just like be even more intense about like these are the positive expressions of who we want to be and, and what we are. So, yeah, these are the six. And we went from seven to six. I mean, three by two, it's an even number. It's, you know, this is also way better for those reasons. So anyway, that just, that's just the aesthetics coming out. But as I said, like no assholes is forever. Like it's 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 been there it's an important member of the team and we're not we're not banishing it right we're retiring it and we're saying like thank you for your service right it's not it's like thank you for your years of service to the company you'll always be welcome you're you'll always be a part of you know but not at the foreground anymore in the background um and so i started to think through and the what popped into my head was like if you and i guess i'll just say like it, it, the retired jersey popped into my head right like we honor the players who like won championships for us or like contributed to the organization, you know? And I, I just, for, for those of you non-sports culture familiar, like you'll go into a stadium and there'll be these jerseys up about like these legendary players that were on the team. Jordan is, is one, but yeah, it's, it's pretty common. And it's really cool because it's a way of reflecting on the contribution that, that someone made uh, in a way that honors them, but also is like, they're not an active player. So thank you we decided to make a no assholes retirement jersey and we are going to hang it from the rafters in this space and we have it here today and so i've asked nathan nathan can you bring it out so we can we can see that it's back here thank you so everybody come or, Every, everybody, Connor, you can, Nathan, why don't you just walk around and show everybody? So get a close look because it's, it's going to be high in the, in the rafters. All right, everybody, thank you, no assholes, for your service. Definitely Hall of Fame caliber.